You're on. Hi everyone, we are here at the Bible reading. We hope you guys are having a good day. It's supposed to rain here. Looks like it's going to. They said pop up storms. It's getting dark. And it's not even 2.30 yet. So today, guys, we're going to be um, taking off where we left off yesterday with Acts chapter 19, which will be verses 13 through 41, Psalm 147, and Proverbs chapter 18, verse 4 and 5. Now, in Acts today, some of these people are going to try to get rid of evil spirits. And they don't say in the name of Jesus Christ, they say, who Paul speaketh of, this Jesus who Paul preacheth of. Do you think that's going to work? Or no? Does that mean the same thing? Do you think it'll work for the evil spirits to get rid of them? Let's see. Are you ready, sure? I'm ready. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. It's like they don't even know Jesus Christ. They're just saying, By the one Paul preacheth. Like, it's Jesus Christ. Not just somebody Paul preacheth about. Like, not even acknowledging Jesus, basically. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, What do you think he's, the evil spirit said? The evil spirit said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, and overcame them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also which used curious arts, like the guy, remember that <clears throat> was prophesied, or the guy that was doing witchcraft and things like that? And people thought he was doing that with God, but it was really with Satan. Many of them also, which were curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mighty grew the word of God and prevailed. After these things were ended, Paul proposed in the spirit, when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia, to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. Do you think he will get to see Rome? Do you think he'll go voluntarily? Maybe he'll get to see Rome, but not in the way he might not get there the way he thinks he'll get there. But God always has a plan to get you where you need to be. So you'll see when that comes to it. Maybe not today. So he sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and Eratus. But he himself stayed in Asia for a season. And the same time there arose no small stir about that way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, Sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they do, that they be no gods which are made with hands. See, this silversmith was making these fake gods. And he's getting angry and wanting to stir up the people because with Paul preaching God and Jesus, a God not by human, made by human hands, 
people are wanting to turn to Jesus and stop worshiping those idols that are made by human hands. And that's losing them money. So they're going to want that stopped, of course. So that one only, this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificent should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worship. Nope, I don't, don't even know who she is. And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And the whole city was filled with confusion. And having caught Gaius and Artatris, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. And when Paul would have entered in unto the people, the disciples suffered him not. They're like, don't do it because that's not a good idea right now. And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater, because it was very dangerous for him to be there at that time. Some therefore cried one thing, and some another, for the assembly was confused, and the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward, and Alexander beckoned with the hand, and would have made his defense unto the people. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, Ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of Ephesians is a worshiper, and of the great goddess Diana, and of the image which fell down from Jupiter. Seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against, ye ought to be quiet, and do nothing harsh, rashly. For ye have brought hither these men, which are neither robbers of churches, nor yet blasphemers of your goddess. Wherefore, if Demetrius and the craftsmen which are with him have a matter against any man, the law is open, and there are deputies, let them implead one another. But if ye inquire anything concerning other matters, it shall be determined in a lawful assembly. For we are in danger to be called in question for this day's uproar, there being no cause whereby we may give an account of this concourse. And when he had thus spoken, he dismissed the assembly. All right, guys, and that's where we're stopping with the book of Acts today. All right. So are you ready, Sher? Sure. Psalm 147. Praise ye the Lord. For it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant, and praise is comely. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart, and bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. Great is our Lord, and of great power, his understanding is infinite. The Lord lifteth up the meek. He casteth the wicked down to the ground. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praise upon the harp unto our God, who covereth the heaven with clouds, who prepareth rain for the earth, who maketh grass to grow upon the mountains. He giveth to the beast his food, and to the young ravens which cry. He delighteth not in the strength of the horse. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, in those that hope is in his mercy. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise thy God, O Zion. For he hath strengthened the bars of thy gates. 
He hath blessed thy children within thee. He maketh peace in thy borders, and filleth thee with the finest of wheat. He sendeth forth his commandment upon earth. His word runneth very swiftly. He giveth snow like wool. He scattereth the hoarfrost like ashes. He casteth forth his ice like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? He sendeth out his word and melteth them. He causeth his wind to blow and the waters flow. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dwelt so with any nation. He has not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. And that was Psalm 147. And ending today's Bible reading is Proverbs chapter 18, verses 4 and 5. The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters, and the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. It is not good to accept the person of the wicked to overthrow the righteous in judgment. Amen. All right, guys, that was our Bible reading for today. I hope it touched your hearts. Let me go over the list of names and our prayer requests really quick. Please keep the following people in prayer. Bridget Boggs and her family. April Thacker and her family. Sherman Crabtree. Michelle Watkins and Andrew. Layla and her son Emil. Cindy and Jim Welsh. Rhonda Karshner. Abby Myers. Jimmy Myers. Dora Carper, Norman Karshner, Pat Dempsey, <clears throat> Melody Stanley and Eric Stanley, Randy Post, Garnet Boyer, Jim Mitchell, Elizabeth Jeffries, Ray Dunlap, Tabitha Clary, and Henry Reffitt. And I can't remember the little girl's name. Um, Mom and Cindy were here visiting today, and Mom said her name, but I can't remember what she said, but it's... It's some relation, the little girl, she's just a baby, she's related to um, Abby's boyfriend's family. And she's just a baby and she's dying of cancer. So please pray for them. God knows her name and who she is. So just pray for the little baby that's dying of cancer in Matthew's family and God knows who it is. So please pray for her and her family. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus and God willing. We'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.